click on the subscribe button, and press the bell icon, to never miss any updates. subject and you know we would need like a 12 week course really to go into depth to really understand the kind of amazing women who were around the Prophet So what I want to do first of all is just help, just help us understand why this topic is really important. Um, first of all, does anyone, can anyone just tell me what is it that makes a person a Sahaba or Sahabiyat if the female version of it? What is it? What's that unique thing that makes a person among those like that select group? Anyone can just share that with us, inshallah. Yes, go ahead. Live to meet the Prophet. Yes, so they had faith and they met him, they were able to at least have some kind of interaction. Because you know there's some people who had faith, but they didn't get a chance to have that the blessed interaction with Prophet. So that's what makes them unique. So with this group, we notice there's some character traits we see in these women. And sometimes we kind of put them into boxes. We say, okay, this one was a warrior. This one was a spiritual person. This one was the educator. And as you look into their lives, you realize that when there was battles, it wasn't just one or two women that were there. There were a number of them there. Either they were helping with nursing, they were nursing wounds, or with providing water. And sometimes they were going into battles. So we're going to talk about those things in particular. When it came to spirituality, they were all driven by a desire, by their love of the Prophet Islam. The love of this deed, the love of the faith, and the love of the desire to learn more and to share with others, inshallah. So, yeah. And one of the things as well, the reason why I really love talking about this topic and it's important to understand is, as human beings, we're very different. You know, each of us have different, have different backgrounds, with a social economic background, different backgrounds in terms of our cultures. And when we find that, when we learn about the Prophet Islam, we learn about the people around him, we realize that he had a very varied community around him. It wasn't just one group of people that were with him. And when we learn about these people, and we know at least 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 of their stories, we can find ourselves in those stories, inshallah. So, and, it's, and, and I'm, I'm prim I primarily work with teachers and with children, so um, if it seems a little bit different, just bear with me, inshallah. All right, so, Now, we look at, for example, we look at determination, we look at courage, these are the certain character traits we're looking at these particular women, and we see that when we start to study their lives, we can realize, oh, these people went through difficult times, like we know right now it is a difficult time in American history. And then sometimes if we look at the, the seerah, we kind of romanticize it, we think, oh, mashallah, it must be such a great time. And it was an amazing time spiritually, as well as in other arenas too, but it was a difficult time. They went through a lot of difficulties. You think about in Mecca, they were dealing with persecution. In, in Medina, it was an accepted faith. The, the people were accepted, but there were some people who did not like this faith coming in. But because it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't prudent for them to say, to, to express their dislike or to try to do anything to attack the Muslims, they, were, they would hide it. And these were the people who were the hypocrites. And they caused a lot of fitna in that role that they played um, because they weren't very open with how they felt, but they did, they did express it. So, you're, so we're dealing with that. You're also dealing with um, communities that, that decided that they, you know, they, there were little battles that were involved, they were, they were involved in battles too. So let's talk about, um, I'm going to start with Fatima, uh, and, and, um, uh, and I'm going to start with her because her story starts at a very young age. She's about five, you know, when her, when the, when her father, the Prophet Sallallahu he's first given the revelation. And even at this young age, she, you, you, um, she has a desire to you know, be around her father, to assist her father. I'm sure you've heard the story of when she was a young girl, and the, her father was praying, alayhi salatu wa salam, and people, you know, put these entrails over him, this, this disgusting you know, internal matter of the, I think, of the camel, they put it on him, and how she goes to her father's assistance. She, she wipes this off, and she, she chastises the people who do it. And this is at a young age. You know, when people think of Fatima, alayhi salam, they think of a very, like, a timid person, 
who doesn't really, you know, come out and, and spend, you know, is kind of like more, you know, in, in her home. And the truth is that she, she was a very spiritual person. She was somebody who, you know, a lot of the stories are around, you know, the kind of the internal uh, contribution that she gave. But we see even from a young age, she was a very brave woman. It takes a lot for somebody to go and tell someone else this is the wrong thing, to see your father being treated in a bad way if you want to stand up like that. And one of the things that I, I love about her story, and many of these women, is that you see a different angle of the Prophet Islam when you look at their stories. For example, we know when the Prophet Islam would, would be in a, in, a, in a gathering, she would come in, he would stand up, right? He would stand up, he would, he would kiss her forehead, he would greet her, he would give her, her his seat. And we're seeing from him how he interacted with women. And each particular story we see, we're learning a different aspect of how the Prophet was. And I, I make the analogy with books. For example, you go into a, a library, right, and you, you might see a book about Martin Luther King. There's probably like 20, 30, 40, I don't know, 100 books about him, but they're not all written from the same angle. Some talk about him as a child, some talk about him as a leader. So they just, they take different aspects. And the thing about learning about the Sahaba, the Sahabiyat, is that you get these different snapshots that help you understand how the Prophet was surrounding Islam in different situations. And, and another, uh, so this is one of the stories, and there are many stories, because really I have a couple of, a few books I brought with me that people can take a look at that are outside, that, um, that give you, uh, that go into more depth, because like I said, I can't really do justice, and I want to mention as many people as possible. And then I want to also talk, I want to talk about Shifa. Now, um, the thing I love about Shifa's story is that she's somebody who was knowledgeable in medicine before she took Shahada, before she became Muslim. And she had the wisdom to know that, okay, I have a skill, but I want to see how does this work within Islam. So she goes to the Prophet Islam and says to him, this is my, my skill set, what, what do I do as a Muslim? And he tells her, okay, this is how you, you practice this particular knowledge that you have, the things that you have to leave aside, the things you carry on with. And for many of us, when we're doing things, when do we, do we really look to see, okay, are we doing this within the framework of this deen? Or are we just doing things without thinking about it. But this is less than we have from her. And she took her skills and she used them for the community. She also learned how to read and write. She would go to, to the Prophet's wife, Hafsa, because she was a person who was you know, literate. And she took classes and she learned from her and she taught other people. And you see examples here of people who decide that they're going to share, share their skills. And not only that, they're going to increase their skill set. They're not going to say, okay, I'm proficient in what I have, but she's learning more because she realizes the more that she's able to get, get the more she can give, inshallah. And we go to the story, and I know many of you probably heard the story of Nusayba. We talk about her a lot, Radi Alawan, and her, her bravery. And uh, I mean, we could probably write books and, you know, screenplay about her life because it was, there was so much that she was involved in. Um, and I don't, but I want to talk about um, uh, um, Baraka, Um Ayman. I want to talk a little bit about her because she's someone that the Prophet Sallallahu loved dearly. And she was with the Prophet, peace be upon him, from before he was born till the day he died. She was around him. And we know that um, she, she was someone who had a great deal of love for him. And I know after the Prophet Sallallahu passed away, a couple of the Sahaba, I believe it was Abu Bakr and uh, Umar, they were with her and they saw her crying. And they were like, oh, you know, she's crying because she was like a mother to him. You know, you know the story about how, um, and some narrations say that she nursed him, some narrations say that she it was just a, she was a caretaker. She was a person who was with him, you know, when he was with his mother and they go on the journey to, to, to what is then Yathrib, and on the way back she passes away and she's the one who buries him and then brings him home. She's, from, she's there from when, he was, when his mother was pregnant with him, from when she was, he was born, to this passing away of his, to his, for his father, of his mother. She brings him home, brings him to his grandfather, for the passing of the grandfather, of the uncle. All of these experiences, she's with him the whole time. And so she obviously it's very natural that she'll have a great love of him. So they said, oh, it must have been because of that. And she says to them, you know, true, I did, you know, I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all this is true, but the reason why I'm crying is because of this is the, because now we, we know the revelation has ceased. Because her, her love, well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was really the love of, of, of him as a person, obviously, but what he brought. And the fact that when this thing, when this ceased, when this ceased it touched her. And you, you, see, you see here that you have that human connection, but it's also a greater connection, the connection to the revelation itself, and how you're having that insight to recognize the, the, the difference and how that is extremely important. And, and the thing about, about her life as well, that is you see somebody who is also a courageous woman. We know that um, 
at the Battle of Uhud, when the men were running away, she was one of the people who was going, saying to them that you should need to stay, you need to be here. And I know you all know the story, so I don't have to go through it in depth, but just to show you that so many of these women had so many different roles. It wasn't, they weren't like, you know, pigeonholed, you know, they, they, they played different role, many different roles. Um, I also want to talk about, you know, Khadija radiallahu anha, and I really should have started with her. I get aside with Fatima because I wanted to show the relationship between the father and the daughter. But you see the story of Khadija radiallahu anha, and, her, and how she was somebody who was a very intelligent woman. And she was, you know, her, you know, her cousin was a scholar of the scriptures of the past, you know, um, one of her. And she would learn from him. And this is why when, when, when they were in near the Kaaba, and a group of you know, noble women were by the Kaaba, and uh, uh, someone calls out to them that, uh, a woman of uh, Tema, when, when a man comes to you, um, Ahmed, when he comes to you, um, if you have the opportunity to marry him, you should. The women were just laughing, like, who is this strange person just making these statements? Whereas Khadija, she had the wisdom to really listen, to think, okay, there must be something going on here. And she also had the humility where some, some women, when they do have wealth, they do have beauty, they have all these other things, it does lead to arrogance. For her, that wasn't the case. For her, it was, it was um, she, she was still very open. And this is the reason why when the Prophet Sallallahu when she had the opportunity to, to hire him, she did and she had someone you know, let her know how he, how he interacted, what kind of person he was. And she was able to match up what she was receiving from, these, from, the, from um, her, her servants' um, um, reports with what she already knew from what she had studied from her, from her cousin. And then she had the opportunity to be with him and to serve him. And her story touches me so much because especially as a wife, you know, you really want to be supportive, right, of your husband. And, and, I, and I say that, sometimes I feel like bad saying that because in the society it's seen as like a negative thing, even though it's, it's, it's amazing how both, I mean, and I think it's both, it goes both ways, you know. But when I read her story and how she would give support to him, would give comfort to him, it's, it's an amazing story. And there's a, number of, there are a couple of books that I'm, I'm aware of that I will share with you that I pray that people get and read. Um, one is a really um, well-written um, um, story by a, a um, scholar in the UK. I don't have the name now, but I can, I can give, leave the details with you. And the other one is by a Turkish writer. It's not as thick, it's a, it's a thinner, it's easier read, but they're both beautiful stories. Because you can see that that human interaction, how, you know, and the thing is that with the Prophet Islam, he was such a great person, you see him from different angles, but here you're seeing a very human story. And as, as, as mothers and as wives, she really gives us ways to see how, how can we build up our families, how do we support our families. Um, I, th the, I think, I don't know how much time I have left. Three minutes. Okay, so I'm going to end with the story of Asma uh, bin Yazid. And I'm going to start, I'm going to tell her story because I think it's, I find it really interesting in that when she asked the question about the, how the, the men they get all these rewards for the worship they're doing when they go out for, for jihad and when they do all these external kind of um, activities, and the Prophet Sallallahu says to her that you get you know, you get the same reward when you serve your husband. And I want to talk about it a bit because sometimes we talk about serving our husbands and it's, like I said, it's kind of this one-way thing. But when you look at the Prophet Islam, you know that it wasn't a one-way thing. He was somebody who, who was in service to his family and he didn't see it as, a, as, a, as something that was, too, that was below him. He actually, and because he, the kind of leadership style he had was a servant leadership style in that he's, he showed people how to be by being that and by, by emulating, by actually showing those actions, you see that there was that two-way thing here. So when she was told that, she, you know, the understanding I want to make sure I convey to you all here is that it's, we, we don't, we shouldn't expect, okay, I'm doing this, you must do this for me, because that way it comes like a, it's not really, you know, it's not done out of love, it's more like, okay, you do this, I do that. But when you're doing things, and inshallah, your spouse, the, you know, the children, we're all doing things, we're competing for, in, in service, this brings a kind of energy into the home that's really amazing. And I, when I see her story, I see that she was content with that. And I want us to look at it and, and understand the service is a, is a great thing, but also understand that it's, it's really wonderful when it comes from both ways and everybody is involved, inshallah. And, and after this story, um, I'm going to end with, with, a, with a, a thing that happened to her before she passed away, where she wanted to go to battle, and she was involved in this particular battle, and she was serving, you know, 
water with bandages. But then they got to a point, this was, a, this was I don't remember, I'm sorry, I should have the name with, with me, but I know it was against the Romans. So she actually goes to the, um, she wants to use, use a weapon, she goes to the tent, she takes the, the um, you know, the peg that holds up the, um, the tent, and she takes it and she charges with it. And she ends up killing a number of em enemy combatants and actually, you know, assisting with the rattle. And I'm sure you hear that you've got somebody who, when it's time to fight and be out and be do things, she's there. When it's time to be of service and to know that there's, you know, the importance of the, the home and the family and creating that arena of love and faith, she's for that too. And I think as Muslim women, we, it's important for us to have that balance and to understand that Everything we do, there's no, there's nothing that is, Allah Ta'ala is well aware of the sacrifices we make, the things that we do, and, and we see the example in these amazing women that they were ready for whatever needed to be done for, for the faith. And inshallah, may Allah Ta'ala make us uh, uh, amongst those, those type of people, inshallah, and to follow in their footsteps. ITV, Call of Peace, Save Humanity.